Welcome to Let's Talk Geek. Uh, we're here at the uh, Warthog Summer Brew Beer Festival. Not quite summer this year. Yeah, I thought it's this rainy. rainy. But uh, most rain means there'll be more beer for everybody else. Um, we're busy here with uh, Cole Sandrock, one of the judges that is going to be judging all the beers. Hi, Cole. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good to have good. you on again. <laughs> yeah, we had you a couple of times to come up here. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, thank you very much. It was awesome to be here. Um, do you want to tell us a bit more about the judging for the beer festival, um, how it works and all the rest of it, and the standards you guys use? Okay. Uh, we judge to the uh, BJCP, that's Beer Judge Certification Program uh, Standards. So you'll notice that a couple of these judges have little orange pins on, which means that they are certified beer judges. To do that, you go through a rigorous exam. Uh, which I'm taking again this year to prove. So, I was about to say, I don't, I don't see any fins on your lapel. No, no, no. Um, yes, it's a contentious point. My wife passed and I failed. But uh, okay. that does give me a number and I can still judge as a novice judge. Okay, no, that's very, very cool. Um, so there are four, a couple of tables. We see six tables here, four judges each. There's one head judge and three other judges. Uh, that's per table. Per table. Um, you can see that they've got standardized forms. Everybody fills in these forms according to the BJCP guidelines, which are um, a quite exhaustive list of standard beer styles. Uh, everybody then talks to one another and uh, we, a consensus vote is reached. Cool, cool. Um, what are the things you have to do to prepare? Because I know like, you haven't brushed your teeth this morning apparently. Well, yes. I mean, they, they, they recommend that you don't dr eat or drink anything spicy or something that's going to mess with your taste. You'll see that there are some water crackers on each table for after a beer just to refresh your pellets, there's clean water, you know, so the idea okay. is that this is a very objective uh, assessment. Try, try and keep your palate clean and everything. Exactly. Um, also, you were telling me something about this in order to how you drink the beers. Yes, each, uh, they're, they're called flights, so each table will go through a flight of beers, a couple of beers, um, eight or nine beers in, in this competition. Um, they recommend not more than uh, 10 or 13 beers. Uh, is, is that the point where your taste buds start to give up? Yes, I mean, even, even if you do discard, uh, you absorb some alcohol through the lining of your mouth. Oh, so, okay. So, yeah, I mean, even so you if you don't swallow, you'll, you'll get a bit intoxicated. Okay, all right. So, obviously, you, you don't want to do that when you're judging. So, um, so and they also problem. stage the beers from light to heavy. So, light and crisp kind of beers first, heavy, dark beers uh, later. And each table will typically be ordered by category. So, there'll be a stout table or an American lager or whatever table. So, that you've got kind of the spirit of the... Um, of, of the all style, the different styles. So you don't get thrown around mm. with the different styles. So I'm oh, sorry, I just just wondering, so what, what does each beer get judged on? Um, each beer gets judged on a couple of categories. Basically, if you if you look at a beer from, from there and you bring it towards you, that's kind of the order in which you judge. So you judge on appearance. So that's like what the color is, how clear it is, whether it's got a nice thick head or whatever. Uh, appearance, then you bring it closer and you judge on aroma. Then you have a sip and you judge on uh, flavor and mouthfeel. Um, and then you judge on overall impression. And each of those have guideline quantities. Oh, right. so, so a particular style, each beer has a, there are 72 different styles of beer in the style guidelines. Um, 23 major styles with subcategories in letters. So I would say this is, I have a, and let's try not to have my beer, uh, a 14B, you know, yeah. that, that yeah. style. And that would be, have particular targets for each of these categories. Okay. So and what it should look like, what it should smell like, etc. Okay. Do you, do you know which beer it is that you're judging as an, uh, you know, you don't want to uh, be judging There's your friend's beer. There's a blinding process, so yeah. we know the beers only by number, so we know that it's this kind of style. So okay. No whose beer whose it is beer or what the name of the beer exactly. is or so on. Yes. Okay. So there's a whole system. There's stewards who are <coughs> uh, responsible for going to fetch the beer and bring them to us and then take yeah. away our discards. Um, and they they know obviously where the beers are, but as soon as they enter this area, nobody knows who, yeah. what beer it is. It's just got a, a, a code. Yeah. which is uh, separately correlated back to the beers. Yeah. And once all of those are then done, once this judging has been done, the best beers from this will go into a best of show. Okay, cool. Um, how does this judging relate to the... Because I know the, the public can also judge. And yes. there's a, apparently a new system that beat the uh, marble system from last yes. year. Uh, most of the time, actually, uh, we've had a kind of a people's choice for a couple of years. 
um, and most of the time the people's choice doesn't particularly coincide with the judging of the formal judging because you've got to understand that these styles you can brew perfectly to style and have a beer that not many people may like because the style may say that it's supposed to be sour and full of bugs. So it's, it's not uh, to public taste, but it matches exactly that Correct. style. So that's why we have the people's choice versus... So some, some brewers say, you know what, the, these style guidelines, all these styles, you know, I just want to brew something that I like, yeah. that I like mm. drinking. And so for those guys who just want to brew a nice drinking beer, they can get a reward by winning the, the, um, the, 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 or the people's the choice. People's choice yes. award. Okay, cool. Um, so the two aren't related in any way. There's no, there's no relationship between the two. They don't talk to one another. Uh, the people vote for the people's choice and the, the judges vote for cool. the judges. I also know this year you've got a different voting system. Yes. Uh, we used to have a system where everybody got a marble and you would kind of drop a marble into a bottle to vote. We now have a system uh, which I just had an old phone lying around and I took a Linux box and loaded Gamu on there and uh, now we've got a system that works with SMSs. So you SMS oh, cool. the beer number and it, it kind of it allows you to vote more than once so you, only your last vote counts. That's common people walk around they want to vote for a beer and then they find another oh, beer they like. Clever, yeah, yeah. So you can switch your vote. Yeah. Um, so, so to encourage people to be honest, there's a prize that's linked to your ticket number. So you you you, you vote with your ticket number and the beer number. Oh, right. And then so so then you get entered into the lottery. Yeah. So I heard some crazy geek talk going around this morning. Um, you, you had there's there's a there's a specific word for the bitterness of a beer. Yes. Which yes. I'd never heard of before. What it's is called that? the IBU, and it's an international bitterness unit. Yeah. Um, actually, there's a there's an international unit for color as well. The SRM, and you'll see that some of these guys will have cards uh, with them, and the judging guidelines also list the ranges. So this international bitterness unit has to do with the um, alpha acids, which are the things in hops that make beer bitter, and that's actually a totally a chemical. You can you can test it chemically. Okay, so it's quite good. All right, I see some of the guys wanting to get in here. Yes. So we're going to end this one here. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, we are with Let's Talk Geek at the Warthog Summer Brew Festival. We're here with Patrick uh, with from De Java. Hi, Patrick. How's it going? All right, and you? Good, good. Um, I see you guys have got your beer that you guys have brewed. What's it called? What's it called? Uh, the beer which we brought for the festival today is a Belgian-style beer, and it's called Jolly Nan. Cool. Um, how do you get the name? Well, basically, how we get got to the name is we, we are a microbrewery in Van der Beel Park. Oh, okay. And we already brewed a Belgian-style beer, a darker-style beer, which we called Happy Monk. Oh, okay. With uh, the thinking behind it that it was brewed by the monks in the Middle Ages in the monasteries. Okay. Late last year, we thought, well, it's maybe time to develop another Belgian-style beer because uh, the Happy Monk is a, is a flagship of the brewery. And uh, the name we thought of Jolly Nan is because the Happy Monk needed to have an, a, 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 jolly a, a Jolly Nan to, to, to accompany him. him. Oh, very cool. Um, what, what are the aspects of what, what were you trying to do with your beers? What flavors are you trying to bring out? Uh, well, you, you it's, it's a Belgian-style beer. Mm -hmm. So the fruitiness in the beer is very high. Um, this one has got a bit of a lemon fruitiness oh, because okay. of the addition of some lemon herbs. Okay. And, and, and what we're trying to get to is a beer which is on par with imported beers. Oh, okay. Very cool. Very and cool. that's why we, you know, go for some Belgian style beers. As, as a matter of fact, this beer actually got first prize in the Clarence uh, Festival earlier this year. Just your mark me, you can buy your, your beer. Yes, we uh, are allowed to uh, actually distribute our beer in Parijs. Uh, obviously, the Wald Triangle, Johannesburg. So there's quite a few outlets where our beer is for sale. Okay, uh, do you want to name two of them just so the people well, up this side will um, know maybe where to go to? One of the, the more prominent ones is uh, Norman Goodfellows. Then obviously also bootleggers. There's quite a few local licks. But if, if people want to find out about where the beer is available, they must go and have a look at our website. Ah, what's the web address? It's www.degarve.co.za. Do you want to just... Uh, Degarve is D-E-G-A-R-V-A. R-V-E. E, -E. e sorry. R-V-E. Yeah. Uh, so just give the web address again. It's www.degarve.co.za. 
E G A R V E dot C O dot Z A. Cool. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Uh, we're here with Ryan from uh, the Tax Trolls, which is uh, University of Pretoria's brewing team. Yes. Um, I believe you guys did quite well last year. Yes, we uh, won an international competition. Um, we entered three beers, uh, three different styles, a lager and ale, and then a speciality. Uh, cool. We won overall with our speciality, as okay. well as um, best speciality and ale. Very cool. Is this a um, South African? Um, it started uh, in South Africa. I think it was started four years ago, three cool. or four years ago. Okay, very, very yeah. cool. Well done. Uh, what are you guys planning on doing this year? Uh, uh, the same thing. We enter a lot of, um, or try and enter a lot of competitions, if there are. Um, so there was a Clarence Brewing uh, Festival that happened recently, as well as this one now. And then at the near end of year, sort of September, we also have an uh, international competition. Uh, about 10 universities from South Africa compete oh, against cool. each other, yeah. I know you said Vits this year and there's quite a bit of competition between the two of you Yeah, guys. we usually try and put uh, our tables together to get some competition going uh, at the start of the year. Uh, we have a lot of interaction with Vits, um, talk to the guys and socialize, etc. But it's also about uh, trying to win, cool. trying to your know, beat session. Um, what was the name of your beer that won last year? Um, the one that, well, there were two that won. The one was an old ale and an imperial Russian stout. Oh, okay, very cool. Yeah. Um, uh, how did you guys do in Clarence? Uh, in Clarence, uh, we had a bit of uh, problems with the, the brew. Um, so we didn't enter the one beer uh, just because of admin and logistics. Um, yeah, but uh, our professors also did very well there. Oh, okay, yeah. very, very cool. Uh, how did you guys get into the trolls and how did the guys get involved? Uh, one of the uh, starting points was our one professor... Uh, getting the brewing uh, lab at the university started. And then after that, some of the students started getting interested in that. We also have a subject in third year in the chemical engineering degree okay, where we learn how to brew. And uh, from that, we sort of get involved Cool. More. I was just making sure, what, what are you studying? So it's uh, chemical engineering, engineering. Yeah. Do you find a lot of the guys that are in the brew team are chemical engineers or do you get a, a Mostly, spread? yeah, mostly chemical engineers. But we also try for... Uh, uh, biomolecular type people, uh, biochemistry from other degrees. Yeah. Okay, all right, cool. Um, also, could you find that it actually helps with your degree, makes it a bit more interesting? Or, or um, it makes it more interesting in that uh, we have a bit more play and less time to study. <laughs> okay, so it takes up a bit of time. Yeah. All right, cool, thank you very much. Hi, uh, we're here from Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Tim. Um, you were telling me that you've been brewing for about five years now? As a yeah, brewer. look, I've been brewing uh, for about five years on a kit brewing, which cool. is just a can. And basically, you add the water and everything. The kit's dehydrated. A dehydrated beer, and all we're doing is rehydrating it and, um, and fermenting it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so these are the guys, uh, I know you've brewed cloth, so these are for people wanting to start in, getting into brewing. Um, so you yeah. like the first yeah. brew, simplify yeah. it quite a bit so they can... Get yeah, you know, the, 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 the full grain brewing section is a whole day process. You know, the guys don't have a lot of time nowadays. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've taken it away from them. We've taken that long day process out and we put it into a kit form, which comes directly from the brewer itself, canned. So it's the full, it's a real stuff. Cool. All we're doing is we're rehydrating it and uh, fermenting it, as I mentioned. So it just and it it's accelerates the process. Yeah. Also a lot simpler. A lot simpler, Don't have yeah. all, the, all the steps. Um, yeah. Great way to get into yeah. it and start Good doing start. your first brew. Yes. Um, what type of uh, beers do you guys brew? Look, we've uh, got a hell of a range. I think if you can name a beer, we've got it. We've got the different ranges we do. Obviously, we do the Brewcraft range. We've got Munson's range. We've got Cascades range. But if you're talking of a beer, RPA, Indian Parallels, Blackrock, this is a Guinness that I'm drinking now. You can cool, see it's got a nice head. very, very good. Did you have a taste? <coughs> no, I haven't. I got it. <coughs> I just saw you yeah. you're pouring it. It just had lovely colour and all the rest of it. So it looked yeah, good. Yeah, so Kilkenny's, you name it, we've got them all, you know. Cool. Yeah. So you guys also, you're saying you do spirits and stuff? Yes, that's also another range to Brewcraft. It's a still spirit sections where the guys can still their own alcohol, but it's only for home use. It's not for resale. All right, so the guys can still their own alcohol and you can make whiskeys, good flavored whiskeys, vodkas, uh, flavored vodkas, Kahlua, herbal liqueur, which is your Jürgenmeister top, your Swiss chocolate, almond, coconut, rums. Okay, very Again, cool. if you name, of, if you name, name a spirit, you've got it. it. Yeah. Where, where can the guys find you? Uh, they can find me on 083 230 Nine one seven one, or they can actually look up brewcroft.net. Dot net. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to just give that number again, just so the guys know? It's, uh, it's 083 230 
9171. Cool, and they just phone Ryan. Good, thanks. Cool. thanks Ryan, Tim. thank you very much. Hi, we're here with Danny from uh, Nkazi Brewery. Nkazi Brewery, cool. yeah. Um, you're just a you brew for yourself and for friends and stuff like that, and part yeah. of Warthog's Brew Club. Yes, correct. Um, you said you've been here f uh, brewing for a year, but you used to do it previously in England. Yeah, did it for um, a few years in England before I moved over to South Africa. Okay, cool. How are you finding the local brewing here compared to England? It's far more passionate. There's, Is it? There's, okay. um, the people that are involved in it are, are far more into the technical side and far more passionate about the beers that they're brewing. Uh, whereas there's in the UK, you've got more choice of, of beers that are on tap available. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm. Uh, that's the one thing. I'm actually quite glad to see all these beers finally starting to come to this country because I spent yeah. some time in England. And you just guys have such a lovely selection out there. And there's a lot of variety. And we've got Belgium on the doorstep as well. So for the Belgian beers as well, you've, everything's on the doorstep. Whereas here it's a bit more difficult. Yes, I know. But you're also interested see, I know in Macro and stuff, you can now get the local ones. Yeah all the rest of it. Um, what beer are you personally brewing? I've got two with me today. There's a, yeah. a bitter, St. George's bitter, because it's coming up for St. George's Day. Yeah. And then a stout, um, cool, cool. a Guinness-type stout. Um, and were you just, uh, what, what were you trying to do with those? So for, the, for the bitter, it was trying to brew a London Pride-type beer, which is one of my favourites okay, back in right England. Is, yeah. And stout was just an experiment. So it's okay, a, it's just very see how experiment it turned out. to see how it works. How out. did it come out? I don't know yet. I've oh, opened one yet. <laughs> okay, so I'm cool. going to get other people to test it first and let me know. Cool. Um, and how are you brewing? How did you uh, just from, from buckets or stuff? Or you yeah, just from a bucket um, and then bottling into individual bottles. So very, very basic. And you don't need an awful lot to get going. All right. So, yeah, it's, it's quite quite a simple process and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. How did you get pulled in? Um, um, I came to the Warthogs last year and um, someone bought me a brew kit. My, okay. wife, my wife bought me a brew kit. Um, and that's got you involved, that got me got involved you again. So All right, cool. Is there anything else you wanted to add? No, that's All right. Good. Cool. Thank Thanks. you for talking to us. Hi, uh, we're here with uh, Tim from uh, Pilsenberg. Apparently, is a burgeoning microbrewery. You're about to go legit from from home brewing. That's correct. Yeah, it's the Palansberg Brewery. Okay, because we're based oh. at Sun City in the Palansberg. Okay, very um, cool. We're lucky that we already have a business in Sun City cool so what we're doing is we're opening a micro brew pub in Sun City we should be open in probably the first of December is the plan very awesome okay um, what's a home brewer and have business like I say in Sun City so I just saw there's a gap in the market there and I thought okay it's now time to expand the hobby from home into a into a uh, small microbrewery and that's what we're going to do. So it's basically a, basically a brew pub. Oh, it's going to be really cool. It's very awesome to actually start finally seeing decent beers coming into the pubs and brew pubs sprouting up around sure. South Africa. Uh, there, there are decent beers everywhere. Even, even SAB is, is a decent beer. I wouldn't knock SAB. They actually make good beers. But what I'm saying is it's the choice. Yeah. Beer is like wine. Well, there's more varieties of beer than there are wine. Okay? And now the word is, is slowly spreading through South Africa. In other parts of the world... Europe especially, and America, Australia. Microbrewers and, and having a large variety of, of beers is the norm. Over here, mm. there's like five main beers. And That's people it. over here, my dad drunk Castle, so I'm going to drink Castle. You know? And at least now, when there's a, like more and more microbrewers and home brewers and events like this, it just spreads the word that there's, there is more to beer than Castle, yes. Vintuk, so on and so people on. People try yeah. the beers. That's right. That's develop right. a wider palate. That's it, um, exactly. And like, as you said, with wine, you've yeah. got a whole range of mm -hmm. wines depending on what you feel and the, like. And the nice thing about beer is something that you may really like, I might dislike. And that's, that's maybe the difference between, between wine and beer. Yeah. It's yeah. really down to the individual, the person, what and it's down to the individual palate because everyone's got a different palate. So you might really like this stout, and I'll go, that's not very nice for me. And it doesn't suit me, but that's nice. That's the thing about beer. You find a beer you like, and you can drink more of it. Yeah. Cool. How did you get into brewing all the research? Um, as a, as a, I'd like to say as a child, really. As, a, as okay. a teenager, yes, as a teenager in the UK. Um, oh, okay. I used, to, used to brew beer in my bedroom, in a dustbin, pushed up next to the radiator to keep it warm. And oh, every okay. morning before I went off to school, you lift the lid and you look inside. And it was really my father. My father used to brew beer at home and then as a kid I got into it as well okay. and it was kind of cool as a, as a sort of 14, 15 year old yeah. to have your friends around and come and drink my beer. My own beer, okay yeah, so yeah, you've been yeah. in for quite a while. Yeah that's right. Yeah. And then came out here and it started to just continue. Right? That's right, been in South Africa now what, 10, 15 years? Okay. 15 years, yeah and, and it's just a case that I brought the hobby over um, 
and, and carried on, carried on. And then the opportunity of Sun City came and I, you know, I'd have always wanted to own a pub, so I might as well own my own cool. pub and yeah, brew the beer as cool. well. Yeah. How do you find uh, people's uptake of and the fact that you're telling them that you're going to do a microbrewery in South Africa? I only support. I've never had anyone saying, oh, that will never work. Everyone's going, wow, that's a really good idea. Um, because the time is right in South Africa for, for different beers. I think people are fed up with the big five beers. Um, they're good beers, but people want to change. People are now realizing, actually, there's more to beer than the big five beers, you know? So they're, they're willing to open their, their taste buds and their palates to new beers, which is a, which is a great thing, you know? Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Cool, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Hi, uh, we're here with Rodent uh, from the James Brewery. You're Hi. telling me just now it's your grandfather's... Uh... Yes, my, my grandfather, Tommy James, also known to his friends as Tubby James, uh, started brewing, as far as we know from my father, back in the 30s. Uh, oh, okay. In and, and Zuland. Very cool. And uh, as a youngster, I remember him drinking home brew with, with my father. Um, apparently, it tasted a little bit like the old Lion Ale. Um, oh, yes, I now remember. My, my brother over on this stall here, Mike Agar and myself, we decided to, to carry on the, the family tradition. tradition. Um, and I'm brewing under my grandfather's surname, uh, James. Cool. Yeah. How long have you been brewing for now? I, my, I did my first brew when I stayed in London back in 1991. Oh, okay, so quite uh, a while so now. Quite a long time, but I've only really escalated my brewing up to all grain brewing in the last 18 months. Oh, okay. So, for example, this is my first summer festival here, and it's my fourth, fourth uh, beer festival overall. All right. How are you finding it? Uh, so you've got uh, two beers that you've yeah, brewed? I've got, uh, I've, I've brought a, a St. Gilles Blonde. It's called the St. Gilles Town Hall Blonde. Named after the very uh, picturesque uh, St. Gilles Town Hall in, in Brussels, in, in Belgium. Uh, if anybody does get over to Brussels, please go to St. Gilles Town Hall. Just behind the town hall, you'll find a lovely beer bar called Moudelambic. And all manner of, of bars, uh, uh, beers from A to Z you'll find there. And uh, so this, this beer is brewed in, in, in uh, memory of that. Okay, cool. Um, and then this other beer is, um, I do a lot of uh, trips over to um, North America on business, uh, especially to Boston, and I enjoy the style of beer over there. So right, this is okay. Patriot's Brown Ale. Okay. Um, so, so you're basically just trying to replicate the flavors of the beers from those occasions. Have you tried to do anything different with them? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, brewing, is, it's, it's a very creative process. Um, we, we use online software to help us uh, uh, with styles and create, um, you know, the, the, um, our, our own particular brand. Um, and it's all about um, experimenting. So you, you, you try a brew and then the next time you might up the hops or Start the, hop, start the hops a little bit earlier in the process or a little bit later. Trying um, to get the right flavours. Exactly. You're, you're trying to find the flavours that you like, but you're also brewing to a particular style. There, there are 49 different styles of beer, so there's a huge variety and, and, and complexity that you can get involved in if you really want to. All right, cool. Was there anything else you wanted to add? No, uh, you know, we're just hoping that the, the people turn up today because the, the weather's a bit damp, but uh, I'm sure the, those that really enjoy their beer will come through yeah, and we look forward to meeting them. Cool, should be cool. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. All right, we're here with uh, Andre de Bier from the Cockpit Brew House. Morning. Uh, cool. Uh, you're telling me you guys uh, are a microbrewery, but you only supply your pub, which is the Cockpit Brew Brew House? That's correct. It's a restaurant in Kalinan, the historical town just outside Pretoria. Um, we brew 300 litres at a time. Cool. That is cool. just enough to supply the restaurant with beer. Uh, so yes, it's uh, brew five uh, lines of beer. Cool. Uh, that's uh, what kinds of beers do you brew? I've got a blonde ale, yeah, a Hefeweizen, a English bitter, a American pale ale, and a stout. Cool. How long have you been? How did you get into brewing? How long have you been in brewing? I started home brewing in two thousand and two. Uh, it's uh, always been a passion of mine. Uh, decided to start brewing because I couldn't find beer that I really enjoyed, so I decided to make my own. Okay. And last year, July, I decided to take this commercial and open the restaurant and brewery in oh, Kalina. Very cool. How are you guys finding it going? Um, very very good. It's, right. uh, I'm more than happy with uh, your I'm very happy success. to see all these local brew and brew houses coming up and finally starting to bring, bring the ale and beer brewing culture into this country. Yeah, it's still a long, long road ahead. It's an education process. We offer free beer tastings of all our beers to anybody that walk in there. And quite often we'll get the case where people want uh, ask for one of the commercial beers. And uh, 
explain to them we only sell our own beer and once I've gone through a tasting you can see the people's eyes open up that there's so much more to beer than than uh, what uh, the people cool. were used uh, to. Do you guys have a website or something where people can find you? Yes, it's www.thecockpitbrewhouse.co.za All right, awesome. Is there anything else you wanted to add uh, while we have you here? No, thank you for the opportunity to... All uh, right, thank you for chatting to us. Thank you. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. We're here with Andres uh, from your, give me the name of your uh, brew house. It's Lovery Fountain Breweries in Bella Bella, Warm Baths. Oh, okay, I, I know Bella Bella, very nice place out there. Cool. Uh, and how long have you been brewing? Uh, five years now, going on five years now. Okay, cool. Um, so what type of uh, ales did you bring or, or beers did you bring for, for the we've festival? Got, we've got a cream ale here, um, which is called um, the bunny beer. And then uh, we brew a skullpat uh, tortoise beer, which is a brown ale. And then we've got a stat, a skunk stat. And um, the last one is a barley wine, the keg ale. Okay, it should be quite interesting to, to have all those beers. Yeah, we try to have a, a, a large variety to, to more or less promote all types all, of beers. All types of beers. And how long have you been brewing for now? It's five years now. Oh, sorry, I did ask that. Um, uh, how, well, how did you get into brewing? Uh, the Brew Club. I tasted Andre de Beer's um, beer. Um, I don't know if you've spoken to him yet. Yes, yes, he's, um, he's a master brewer and he taught me, took me one Saturday, taught me how to brew and then I built a brewery and started brewing and made a lot of mistakes and slowly but surely I think we're getting there. Cool, very cool. I know you said you, you're possibly going to become a microbrewery? Yes, we're in the process now of applying for licenses and all that, so hopefully one of these days. Uh, you'll be able to get your beers in the shop we'll and stuff. You'll be able to, be able to, 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 to sell into and, and, to, and to market and all that. All right, very cool. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Nope, that's it. All come, right. come around and have a beer. Definitely. Cool, <laughs> thank, thank you. you very much. Bye. Uh, we're here with Mike Agar of Agar Breweries. Um, thanks for joining us. So we were chatting it's to your pleasure. brother earlier. Um, what can you tell us about your brewery? Well, uh, Agar's brewery has been uh, uh, in operation for the last three years quite extensively. Um, we focus on, on real ales. Cool. Um, what, what kind of ales are you guys brewing? We, we brew a range. Uh, we brew a blonde ale at the moment, uh, which is a light, uh, easy entry beer for, for those just uh, getting used to the craft beers. Uh, we brew a Kolsch. Uh, you can see on my sign over there. I don't know if it, I can pan there. Um, which is a German style uh, light ale from Cologne. Um, and then we brew through uh, uh, special bitters. It's our Agar's Gold. Um, and then we do an Agar's Red, which is an American uh, red okay, ale. Very cool. Quite a couple there. Yeah, we've got a few, few at hand. Uh, how do you actually get into brewing? Well, I know my brother has mentioned that our, our grandfather was a brewer about 40, 40 years ago. Um, and I think that memory kindled Stuck something in us when we, we grew up. And uh, I did a, a stint of three years in America. Okay. Uh, where, I was, where I was exposed to the microbrewing industry. Oh, very it's cool. It's huge over there. I mean, there are brew shops everywhere. And, and that's actually where I took it up. Uh, we were fortunate there to have ingredients and... Uh, from all over the world, which is now uh, what's happening in SA. In the last few years, we've been able to to buy ingredients here from all over. Yeah, the world. I must say, you're starting to see a lot more variety and stuff. And like I know there was quite a growth from last year, even just for this event. Uh, um, I, I think so. I mean, I, I think there's perhaps 20 percent up in volume. Uh, we've got 44 brewers this year, 89 different beers. So it's it's definitely an industry that's. Well, when I say an industry, it's a, it's a craft industry that's bubbling under. A lot starting, of potential. To get there. As I said, we also heard today there's a couple of microbreweries starting to come through and stuff, which is also quite nice, which means that you should propagate and get more and more people. Well, what, what's interesting about that is if you look in Joburg, there's barely any. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the microbreweries in the country, that list continues to grow. So they are popping up all over. Joburg, however, needs, needs a couple needs more, okay. more microbreweries. Tip for anybody out there, if you want to start one, yeah. so in Joburg, there, there's a shortage. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you very much. All Thanks right. for chatting Pleasure. to us. Hi, we're here with Moritz from Draymond's Breweries. Uh, you guys are quite a successful microbrewery. I've seen your beers around quite a bit. Thanks for that. Uh, pretty cool. Do you want to tell us about yourselves? Uh, how did you start? Well, probably started just like most people around here. 
and uh, just progress to uh, the next step over the years, which was becoming a, a full-fledged uh, licensed microbrewery and also recently a distillery, micro distillery. Oh, very cool. Distilled products, whiskey. Oh, okay. Uh, whiskey, what else are you doing there in the distillery? We do uh, a clear spirit, which in South African terms is called Mampur, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm very proud of my single malt which is the, the only I felt single malt ever been made this part of the world. Okay, very cool, very cool. Yeah, um, full range of beers. Yes, uh, I see you've got five beers here. What? Uh, we got we got three beers on tap for tasting, okay. which is, that is what I pledged for, for right. today. But we probably make about 12 different styles oh, of beer okay, very uh, year cool. round. Seasonal specialities, you know, the dark, the dark yummy ones for, for winter, full flavored stouts, porters. And in summer we do uh, more light Cool. Light colored beers, but also, you know, what distinguishes us from being, you know, just another brewery is we brew, brew full flavored beers. So, cool. not, um, not scared of hops. Where can the guys fi find you? I know I know your beers are available on Macro at the moment now. Yeah, Macro, the Tops, tops group, uh, we, we're expanding uh, rapidly into the liquor cities. Okay. Uh, and obviously, the best place still to buy fresh beers directly from, from Trayman's Brewery. Uh, whereabouts are you guys? Silverton, Taiko Road, Triple Two. Uh, Pretoria. Cool, no, it's very uh, been, good. Been there for the last 12 years, uh, 10, 12 years, and uh, before that, started uh, another couple of years back in my garage, like most of these guys are brewing nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Any advice for the guys wanting to start uh, brewing or progress to micro brewing? I think they should not consider giving up their day jobs initially. very fast initially and uh, build up a, a sustainable business on the side. Uh, you're going to make your boss angry at work, but uh, at some point in time you, you can say goodbye and start your own microbrewery. All right, cool. Anything else you want to add uh, while we're here? Oh, well, uh, enjoy the day, and it's been uh, absolutely wonderful. I'm, I'm the founder of this of this oh. Talk Brewers. Congratulations, and, uh, well done. The first meeting was held uh, June 1993. Okay. at my home with three or four guys and it's wonderful to see the progression, the progression. of a, a festival of, of uh, uh, thousands of Yeah, and I can see people. there's so much beer pledge here. I think it's about, what's it, two meter cubes or 2,000 two litre? Uh, what's more important is the variety and also yeah. uh, absolutely the guys' passion with what they have achieved here in, in creating something different. All right, well then, thank you very much for thank creating you. this event. Thanks, Jeff. Right, thanks. We have Ruan with us here from... Uh, Cam Camel Horse Brewery. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit more about your brewery and, and the beers that you make? Yes, I've started about two years ago. Cool. Um, start with a club and then start on my own. Obviously with the help of all the home brewers mm -hmm. and all the micro brewers. And uh, I'll brew all sorts of beer, but I love the vice and the hoppy beers and also stout. Cool. Uh, do you get a lot of support from uh, it's Warthogs Brew? brew. Warthogs Brewery, yeah. It's, um, you get a lot of support from the guys. They're always cool. willing to help and it's, it's, so it's definitely worth while well, getting involved is when you're wanting to start and get with, into it. With the club, yes. It's difficult doing it on your own. I think you need some advice and some expertise in order to get it going. Cool. Um, what else? Uh, have you done anything special with your beers? No, not really special. Uh, but like I've said, I like the RP beers and uh, uh, also the German type beers, Weiss uh, beers, very nice. Awesome. Uh, was there anything more you wanted to add? Uh, How did you come about your name? Uh, it's a family family uh, mascot. The, oh, okay. The, the giraffe, so that's why we decide on it. And with an Afrikaans and a combination Come all, camel horse. Yeah. Yes. Okay, very cool. Okay. Nice name. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks for chatting to us. We have uh, with Natalie from the Clarence uh, Brew, Brew House or Brewery. Um, you were just telling me about you're the only brewery in the Free State. Yes, we are. We're the only microbrewery in the Free State, in the town uh, of Clarence. Cool. Uh, and you guys do five different uh, beers? Yes, we do. We specialize in ales. We have four ales and we have a vice beer. Okay, very nice. Uh, anything special about those beers? Well, as in the microbrewery, they're all handcrafted. Uh, they're all made on our own farm. We brew on our farm. Okay. And um, they're fantastic. We have a, a, a large following for our beers, which is lovely. Cool, cool. And you said you also do the three ciders. Yes, we do. We have an apple cider, a cherry cider, and a berry cider. Okay. And they're all um, organic, um, unpasteurized, unfilt um, so not unfiltered, and un untreated with any chemicals and pesticides. And um, we grow, we, like I said, we grow our own apples and cherries from our farm. 
All right, very cool. Also, you said you guys do the Clarence Beer Festival as well. Yes, we do have an annual beer fest. It's at the end of February every year. We had 1,100 visitors this year. It was very really cool. fantastic. Very, very cool. I've, I've gathered to chat to some of the guys who were here today. They all pretty much enjoyed it. Yeah, we had, we had 24 microbrewers on the fest, which was, was wonderful. We had 56 different beers. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to mention while we're here? At, about Clarence? Come and visit Clarence. It's a beautiful town. It's the most picturesque town in the Free State with great beer. Cool, awesome. Thank you very much for ch chatting to us. I'm here with Rion from uh, Tweer Dronks Brewery. You guys are just a home brewery. Um, what can you tell us about your beers? Sure. We always just try to make it drinkable and say what enjoys it. Matt. Cool. I must say, I really like your shirt. Uh, Draft Draft Vader, the Drunk Brewery. It's very cool. Uh, apparently, you guys have a lot of very cool shirts. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every year, we just make t-shirts to cover the cost and yeah, pay, pay for money at yeah, least. Yeah. Cool. Um, what type of beers did you make? Um, basically, everything from very pale ale. All right, this is a really shale, but yeah, to the dark stuff. Yeah, today would have been perfect for the dark beers, but yeah, ah, it happens that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Is there anything you want to add? Uh, how did you get into brewing? How uh, did I? Get into brewer brewing. Um, just a, f a friend of Pretoria started making beer and I thought, oh, cool. And yeah, so it's about almost nine years ago. Oh, okay, so you're doing it quite a while. Batch, yeah? Okay, very yeah. cool. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to add? No, that's cool. <laughs> right, cool. Enjoy Thank the beer fest. Yeah. We'll do. Thank you very much. Cheers. We're here with Brennan from Copper Lake Breweries. Uh, you're a uh, microbrewery. You said you started about a year ago and won some awards. Yes, we won the um, four best beers for the Warthogs competition for 2010. Okay, cool. Based cool. near Lanseria Airport. Yeah. We're busy at the moment. We're almost completed with our microbrewery. Going to brewery. Produce about 2,000 litres a day. You said that's going to be uh, going live in about May? Yes, yeah. We'll be, cool. at the moment, we're brewing on a small scale, on a small system, but our large system will be producing in about May. Cool. And we're going to be distributing around the four ways area to be initially to begin with. Okay. And then move further afield move out as you get sort out the logistics. Cool. Uh, what's the, what kind of beers do you make? Uh, we've made 40 different beers to date, just experimenting, but we've got a nice dark lager and an ale at the beer fest today. Cool. So we're going to be doing four beers. Initially, we're going to start off with lagers because that's what people are used to yeah, and then yeah. slowly move on to ales and darker beers. Okay, very, very cool. Are you, so you're also associated with the pub? Or going to be associated with the pub? No. Oh, not, not, we not. We won't have a brew pub. It's okay. just going to be a brewery. All right, cool. Sorry, sorry. I'm My wife there. won't allow me to stand behind her <laughs> okay. for my whole life. All right, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, was there anything else you wanted to add or uh, tell us about your brewery? Um, no. Thank you. And I think it springs to mind at the moment. All right, right. cool. Thank <laughs> you very much. Where can people find you? Do you have a website or something like that? We haven't got a website at the moment, but we will be. The website will be coming um, live soon, which will be www.copperlakebreweries.co.za. Cool. Right. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.